Now I'm going to deal with numbers 5 through 7 all in the same uh, set of videos here. Since 5, to th 5 through 7 are um, relatively related here, I'm going to talk about PPFs as they relate to trade. How to calculate the absolute and comparative advantage. And um, how we can calculate the gains from trade. So if you remember from the very first pen cast in this chapter, what we saw was that um, countries are going to be understood as being able to benefit from free trade practices. So if they benefit from free trade, then the question becomes one of um, what do they um, – uh, you know how how can we understand that they're benefiting from this free trade? So let's draw two countries here: U.S. and China. And let's keep this relatively simple at this point by drawing two linear production possibility frontiers. Let's keep the products the same for right now, just because. Um, well, it's probably useful to keep a some similarities here. So let's just keep pens and candy. Okay. So the idea here is that each country is going to be good at making one thing. Each country needs to consume both things. And they're going to trade for the other good. When we say that a country is good at making one thing, we mean that each country each country is going to have a lower opportunity cost for one product. So there's going to be one product where they have a really really low opportunity cost compared to the other country. That's what we're going to know as the comparative advantage, which we'll be dealing with here in a little bit. So to start to talk about each of these three things, what we need to do now is add some numbers. So what we need to do at this point is we need to add, uh, we need to have some understanding of what the slope is along each of these two graphs. Now because this is linear, I only need to give you two points. Let's make this a hundred and a thousand. I'm making up these numbers, so there's no logic um, other than that. Uh, I'm just picking simple numbers here, just because I can move a little bit faster. Um, okay. So. Um, Let's deal first with a, a rather simple concept that has nothing to do with trade. But the reason why economists talk about it is because some of you may think this already. Absolute advantage, it means that you can just make more. It just means that you're bigger. Um, in this case, the U.S. has an absolute advantage in candy. 
for whatever reasons, the res the resources within the U.S. are really good at making candy because the U.S. can make a thousand units of candy. China can only make 750 units of candy. So the U.S. is bigger. Now, what's important to remember is that that's not going to tell us anything about what U.S. produces. It just means that it could produce more. And in this example here, I have China with an absolute advantage. in pens. Because if we look at this example here, China can make more pens than the U.S. can. Now, a country like China or the U.S. could actually have an absolute advantage in both. Absolute advantage means nothing for how a country is going to choose to trade. What we need to find is the comparative advantage. And with the comparative advantage, what we're looking at here is the lowest opportunity cost. So we need to calculate the slope for the two countries. Let's start with the U.S. In the U.S., the trade-off is 100 pence to 1,000 candy. And in that trade-off there, we could reduce it down to be 1 pen. one pen to ten candy. And in China, here we can see that the trade-off is um, 250 pens to 750 candy, which we can reduce down to one pen to three candy. Now with both of these, we could also, I would suggest, reduce it down the other way as well. How much does one candy cost? One candy, so now I'm dividing each side by a thousand, costs a tenth of a pen. One candy is a third of a pen. So, the question we have to ask ourselves then is, who makes pens the cheapest? In other words, who has the comparative advantage? For pens? And then, who makes candy the cheapest? Who has the comparative advantage for candy? So, if we go back to um, what the U.S. faces, the U.S., one candy is a tenth of a pen. China, what we're comparing here is that one candy costs a third of a pen. So basically, who makes candy the cheapest? In this case, the answer is the U.S. Because the U.S. sacrifices only a tenth of a pen. So the U.S. has the comparative advantage, gives up the least. They have a comparative advantage in candy. They can simply make it the cheapest. So that's my answer to this question here. In terms of who makes pens the cheapest, now I'm looking at in the U.S., one pen, ten candy, and in China, it is one pen to three candy. Who makes pens the cheapest? That would be China. 
Why? Because they give up the least. China has the comparative advantage in pounds. Now, that's going to be useful to us because each country will produce where they have a comparative advantage. So in this scenario here, each country, in this case U.S., is going to make just pens. I'm sorry, the U.S. is going to make just candy. China will make just pens. So in moment one, what we're saying here is that the U.S. is going to start off right there. They're going to make just pens. I'm sorry, just candy, because that's where they have the comparative advantage. And China is going to make just pens. Then they're going to trade. So that's what's happening in moment two. Because the idea is that they want to consume both products, but they're only going to produce one product, trade for the other product they want, and then they're going to consume. So the question is, is how are they going to trade with each other? What are the terms of trade going to be? The terms of trade is going to be in the range of the opportunity costs. One pen will trade between, somewhere between, one pen is going to trade somewhere between three candy and ten candy. We don't exactly know where it'll exist in that range because it's going to depend on how necessary the product is, how good your negotiators are, but it has to exist somewhere in that range. The question obviously then you might be asking yourself is why is that the case? Why would one pen have to trade for at least three candy? In this case, if the US or I'm sorry, if China only got so China, remember what China's doing here. China's making lots and lots of pens, and they needed to get candy. Now, if they did it themselves, if they did not trade with anyone else, every time they gave up a pen, they would get three candy. So why would they accept anything less than three uh, pieces of candy from the U.S. for each pen? Because they'd be better off doing it themselves. Remember, they give up a pen if they do it themselves, they get three candy. Why would they give up a pen and get only two candy from the U.S.? They wouldn't. Now, it also can't trade for more than ten candy. In this case, the U.S. would be the one that would be upset about the situation. There's this, this somewhat the reverse way. They're giving up candy to, you know, in this case, to get pens. So they're not going to want to give up more than ten candy to get a pen. Because if they do it themselves, they just have to give up 10 candy to get a pen. So we don't exactly know where it's going to exist between the two, but it's going to exist somewhere. Now, what we can calculate from this, though, is we can start to then calculate what the gain from trade is going to be. And the way that the gain of trade is going to look like is it's going to look like I am consuming outside of my frontier. So let's start with that. So what that means is that in the case of the U.S., that... Although I can't produce 
outside of my frontier. I can consume outside of my frontier. So what I'm saying here is that the U.S. can have a consumption point outside of the production frontier. That's possible. And that's why we say that free trade benefits all. The issue comes in when we say that there's gains from trade is if the country, the U.S. could have been doing that on its own, you can see here that for the same number of pens, they get more candy. And for the same um, number of pens, they get more candy. Both countries. So both countries benefit from this kind of situation. Now, what we would have to do is we'd have to start to calculate these things. Um, if we wanted to calculate it, uh, let's... Um, let's pick an example here. Let's do one pen trading for five candy. I'm write it out here as let us assume. Let us assume that one pen trades for five candy. And just to keep up with the same numbers here, let's deal with a um, hundred and a thousand. And 250 and 750. I'm just repeating this, the same numbers from the start of this moment. So let's start this again. In moment one, the US is going to produce, in this case, a thousand, um, right, in this case, you're going to make a thousand um, of candy, zero pens. China is going to make 250 pens and zero candy. Okay, and then they agree, for whatever reason, they agreed to do one pen to five candy. So let's pick a, a ratio here that's a one to five ratio here. Um, I got a mistake here. Zero candy and... Oh, I don't have a mistake. I just wrote it wrong. Sorry. I don't like this. So let's pick a ratio that works here. So let's pick... Um, let's... Pick twenty five pens, two hundred and twenty five candy. It's not really important. Well, I mean, it's somewhat important the numbers I picked here. What's most important is that this is a one to five ratio. So I'm sticking with this here. So what that means is that in moment two. What's going to happen is that the U.S. is going to lose 125 candy, but gain 25 pence. So now their new position is 25 pence and 875 candy. Whereas for China... They are losing 25 pens, but they are gaining 125 candy, right? Because that's, again, they want both goods, so they're trading for the other thing that they're trying, trying to get. Um, <coughs> now, both countries are going to be at a situation like that. Okay, so... Um, the question is going to be is that this is where they are in both situations after trade. To calculate the gains from trade, what we're saying here is what would no trade be? Or what would no trade look like? 
And if we wanted to know what no trade would look like, um, is that if, if they had not traded, and that's important to say here, if they had not traded, um, then in the case of the U.S., they were at a, um, again, one pen to ten candy. <coughs> and one pen to ten candy would mean that to get 25 pens, they would have to give up 250 candy, which would mean that they'd be at 750 candy. Why 750? Because again, they would have to give up 250, 1 to 10 ratio. So 25 pens would require 250 decrease in candy, and it's a 250 decrease from the 1,000. So 1,000 minus 250 leaves me with 750. We can see here that for the same number of pens, by trading, I get 125 more candy. Alternatively, for China, that for China, they've got a one pen to three candy ratio. That if they wanted, uh, for instance, something like, um, let me just get it over here. Calculator. Um, that if they wanted um, 125 candy, um, that what that would mean. is it would require a sacrifice of uh, 41.6 pens. How did I get that? I took the 125 candies, divided it by 3, which is our sacrifice required here, to mean that 41.66 pens would have to be sacrificed to get 125 candy. That 41.66 gets subtracted from 250, which is the maximum number of pens they could make if they only focused on pens. And what that gives me is, sorry, let's make it here, 208.33 pens to 125 candy. And what you can see here is that now for the same number of candies, by trading, right, in this case I get, what, 15, 16, 16 and two-thirds more pence. And so both countries are individually benefiting <laughs> from this free trade.